This is Pakistan, officially the Islamic Republic of Pakistan, is a country in South Asia. It is the world's fifth most populous country, with almost 227 million, and has the world's second largest Muslim population. Since its birth in 1947, Pakistan has lived in constant turmoil, despite being conceived as a democracy. The military has ruled it for nearly half of its existence, while engaged in sporadic negotiations with its old foe India. Its leaders have great mistrust of the neighboring nuclear state, which continues to determine national objectives, even as it allows notorious Islamic militants to operate on its soil. Pakistan is both a fragile state and a modernizing society. The economy of Pakistan is the 47th largest worldwide in terms of nominal gross domestic product, with $347 billion and a nominal GDP per capita of $1,255 which stands at 181st worldwide. Pakistan's Human Development Index is one of the lowest in Asia, after Yemen and Afghanistan. Wealth distribution in Pakistan is slightly varied, with the top 10% of the population earning 28.4% and the bottom 50% earning only 11.6% of the income. Pakistan's economy, like an airplane, has crashed 13 times in the last 60 years, each time requiring an international monetary fund bailout. It wasn't always so. During the 1970s, Pakistan's GDP per capita was richer than India, China, and Bangladesh. But in 1979, China took over Pakistan. Today Pakistan is the poorest. Its most recent gross domestic product growth estimate was only 3.9%, barely sufficient to keep pace with population growth. And Pakistan's federal government is nearly bankrupt. So, how did Pakistan's economy end up here? On August 14, 1947, Pakistan got its independence from British Indian Empire and separated from India. Pakistan is divided into two areas based on Muslim majorities, West Pakistan and East Pakistan, and these borders left most economic centers like Delhi, Bombay, and Calcutta within India, leaving the future Pakistan at an economic disadvantage. However, Pakistan's economic growth rate averaged 5% annually, which was achieved by very few countries in 1947. At that time, agriculture was the main occupation of Pakistan's 30 million people, contributing 53% of GDP and 99% of exports. Ayub Khan, the first military dictator of Pakistan, assumed complete control of the state in October 1958 with the help of Harvard advisors. Khan vigorously implemented the Planning Commission on Economic Management and Reforms in the country. During the late 1960s, Green Revolution technology was introduced, which boosted agriculture at a respectable rate of 4%. At that time, the cultivation and transportation of illicit narcotics remain a large informal economy sector. Pakistan was one of the world's leading producers of the opium poppy, and produced or transported cannabis from Afghanistan for local markets and re-export abroad. The manufacturing sector also expanded by 9% annually, and various new industries were set up. By 1969, Pakistan's manufactured exports were higher than the exports of Thailand, Malaysia and Indonesia combined. GDP growth in this decade jumped to an average annual rate of 6.7% from 5% in the 1950. Poverty incidents declined, and GDP per capita increased. However, the growing interregional economic disparity between East and West Pakistan led to a civil war, which ended in the emergence of the independent state of Bangladesh in 1971. The breakup of Pakistan had a traumatic effect on the national psyche and negated the very concept upon which a model developing Pakistan was founded. However, East Pakistan benefited from Ayub's economic reforms. To outsiders, Pakistan was a model developing economy to emulate, but domestically there was a total rejection of this economic model. In the chaos of 1971, Zulfikar Ali Bhutto took advantage of the resentment against Ayub's economic policies and promised to restore the principles of distributive justice 
and equity to the forefront of Pakistan's development strategy under the slogan of Islamic Socialism. Bhutto's populist policies of nationalizing all the sectors hit the Pakistan economy so severely that the East Asian countries that were lagging behind Pakistan in growth and economic indicators in the late 1960s not only overtook it, but also became huge success stories. The oil price shock of the 1970s, as well as droughts and floods crippled the Pakistan economy. The growth rate fell to 3.7% per annum from the 6%. The Bhutto government came to power. Social justice proved extremely weak. In July 1977, a military coup overthrew the Bhutto government and denationalized the sectors. However, economic conditions did improve, but increased fiscal deficits. The decline in development expenditure and the imbalance of payments impacted the public finances and macroeconomic stability in the 1990s. Consequently, Pakistan had to approach the International Monetary Fund for assistance in 1988, and the era of debt crisis began in Pakistan. Since 1947, Pakistan has had 22 prime ministers, and none of them has ever completed a full term. They either resigned, they were terminated, they finished a term they didn't start, or they were assassinated. The average lifespan of a politically elected government has been less than two years. The political instability hit the Pakistan economy very severely. We find the evidence in macro trends. We can see a downtrend in the growth rate progression. Pakistan's foreign trade balance has been adverse throughout its economic history, and the difference has increased over time. Due to overregulation, Controls and restrictions of all kinds on the private sector hit the business and hit the foreign investment throughout the history. And the obsession of Kashmir led Pakistan to spend more money on the military than on education. There are also three successful military coups, and they rewarded the economy very well. The United States had always been more favorably disposed toward Pakistan's military dictators, as they are relatively more subordinate and subservient to the American interests. Thus, the acceleration of inflows of foreign assistance to Pakistan led to the observed higher growth rates rather than sound economic policies, better governance, and the efficient utilization of resources. Ayub was rewarded for his close economic and military ties with the United States in confronting the Soviet Union. Zia ul Haq received a boost as $5 billion was channeled through Pakistan for Afghanistan's Mujahideen. In Musharraf's decision to openly support the United States in the war on terror brought in approximately $10 billion of military assistance. But today, U.S.-Pakistan relations are not good. The U.S. accused Pakistan of giving safe haven to the Taliban and promoting terrorism. On January 1, 2018, Donald Trump again criticized Pakistan saying, they have given us nothing but lies and deceit. President Trump also announced canceling a $300 million disbursement to Pakistan, citing its failure to take decisive actions against Afghan Taliban militants and their safe havens in Pakistan. On the other hand, Pakistan has maintained an extremely close and supportive special relationship with China. The $62 billion worth of China, Pakistan Economic Corridor Project is evidence of their friendship. The project is designed to resolve Pakistan's energy deficit, improve connectivity, and establish economic development zones, but political instability and the failure of debt management will affect the project. When Imran Khan, the former cricket player whose political party won Pakistan's disputed election in 28, everyone thought he would fix the Bhutto and Sharif dynasty's blunder who are accused of being corrupted and responsible for the debt crisis. Accountability but Imran Khan also failed in his anti-corruption agenda and mismanagement of the economy and became more corrupted than the previous government. Today, Pakistan's economy is facing debt crisis, energy crisis, balance of payments crisis, and inflation at the same time. The country has always paid a heavy price in the aftermath of non-democratic regimes in the form of severe economic disruptions, policy reversals, complete breakdowns of institutions, and a lack of accountability. 
The name Pakistan means land of purity. They need a pure leader who dares to act above self-interest and religious hatred and perform with more accountability. For the sake of Pakistan's children, that day should come soon.